volt, 100 amp hour. We're gonna test this and see how, how accurate this is. That plug this in. It's a little uh, more than I expected. 100 amp hour battery. Run this fridge. Let's just do a quick uh, battery capacity test. Battery uh, outside uh, comes up and over and uh, plugs into this 9000 BTU uh, mini split heat pump. Battery, in this case, run a microwave. A full size gas furnace. A uh, load of wash. Let's see if it will run an electric hot plate. Smart battery, run a household vacuum cleaner. Is it able to run a gaming desktop? Let's just jump into the app uh, super fast. Inside the battery here. Here's my full size uh, refrigerator that uh, I use uh, in my kitchen on a daily basis. And uh, the test that we're gonna do today is how long will this 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery run this fridge. We're also going to do a capacity test at the same time. So that's why I've got so many different things here. So we've got the Anchor Solix C1000 power station. We're going to plug the uh, battery into the solar port and the DC port on this power station and this will provide the inverter for the fridge. At the same time, we are going to be monitoring this screen. If it will stay on, uh, we will see. And then uh, we are going to also be monitoring the Victron Smart Shunt, which uh, I've got connected up right here. So worst case scenario, we'll be able to see the data from this and we'll see if we can pull a full 100 amp hours. As we can see here, uh, or hopefully you can see, uh, our state of charge is 100% up there in the top right corner. 13.4 volts. And then this power station here is just providing the USB power to the phones and the camera and what have you so that we don't run out of juice. Okay, we've got uh, everything uh, plugged in ready to go. Now, the anchor was uh, started at 100% uh, state of charge. So it's actually uh, not going to be drawing any power from this battery just yet. And then we'll just watch when this starts. That way I'm not just sitting here waiting. And uh, then we can kind of draw uh, conclusions based on what time the timer says when it starts running. So uh, that uh, should hopefully give us a, a better uh, feel uh, for stuff. But uh, we've got it plugged in right here. And uh, we'll just let her rip here uh, for a minute and uh, see how it goes. Just a quick uh, update. We are about eight hours in. We still have 71% uh, remaining. And incidentally, the shunt, I'm sorry, the yeah, the Victron shunt and the sh built-in shunt in the battery both match, both are estimating 71 percent so that's good the voltage matches and uh, the current slightly different the Victron shunt is saying 9.5 amps and the shunt in the battery is saying 9.7 close a uh, slight difference there but uh, this is working great uh, so the fridge is on you can see it's pulling 96 watts and uh, we're putting in 126 watts from the battery. So it's just kind of keeping this uh, power station topped off. It's running the fridge great. Just another quick update. We've been going for uh, almost 21 hours and uh, we, can, we only have 5% remaining, but we've consumed 91.8 amp hours thus far. So, looking pretty good. Uh, hopefully we make it. We're still estimating 5% on the Victron shunt. The uh, built-in shunt on the battery is estimating 6%. And it stayed very close to the Victron smart shunt. So I'm happy to see that uh, this monitor here is extremely accurate. So, that's awesome.
we've got uh, this 12 volt 100 amp hour battery uh, outside you can see it's a little chilly today i got some snow on the ground and uh, anyway uh, we're feeding this uh, inverter right here and uh, i've got a temporary uh, connection here uh, it comes up and over and uh, plugs into this 9000 btu 120 volt uh, mini split heat pump so we're actually going to be running this on heat today we're going to run it for an hour and uh, first see if this can if this battery can run it i'm pretty sure it can because this doesn't pull uh, that much power 100 percent state of charge so we've got the timer so we're going to start up the uh, heat pump and uh, start the timer okay the mini split is starting up We're gonna come over here and start our timer. And uh, right off the bat, I don't know if you can see, right here, the blue uh, letters, we're pulling close to 600 watts on startup. Now, the cool thing about the mini split is it ramps up right when we first turn it on. I just barely turned it on. Uh, we should see that number drop uh, considerably by after it's run for a minute. So anyway, let's uh, come back after an hour and uh, we'll see how this is done. One minute past uh, the hour mark and uh, got 60% uh, left. So used about 40% and uh, I don't know if you can see, but now we're currently pulling just uh, 428 watts. Can a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery run a full size mini split yep no problem can a 12 volt 100 amp hour go kilowatt hour brand battery in this case run a microwave this will be an interesting test uh this battery is only rated for um 100 amps of discharge that's going to this microwave should put this battery uh, over its limit. So we'll see uh, if there's any kind of uh, safeties that kick in uh, or if it's just uh, gonna brute force it and, uh, and run it. Uh, we don't know, we're going to find out. So this inverter, this is the 3000 watt Renogy charger and inverter. This has more than enough oomph to run the microwave. So uh, if we don't have enough uh, oomph to do it, uh, the battery will be the problem. If we look here, uh, we are at a 59% state of charge, 13.16 uh, volts uh, currently, and uh, the inverter overhead is uh, consuming about 43 watts. Looks like it started. But we are pulling almost 2,000 watts of power. Oh, there we go. All right, now it shut off. <laughs> All right, so took just a second uh, to uh, trigger, um, but we did trip a uh, overcurrent protection uh, on the BMS in here, which is good. That was what I was hoping to see. So uh, we're good. It's hard to see. It's very small font, but this red right here says error, and then right down here it says uh, protection DC. So uh, anyway, it uh, it shut itself off. Next test, can a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, and in this case, the go kilowatt hour battery run. Follow the extension cord in here. A full size gas furnace. Got this uh, awesome little um, transfer switch right here. This is called the Easy Generator Switch. I did a video about how to install this, so I'll leave a link down in the description for that and maybe right up here in the top right corner. But uh, this is the secret sauce to being able to run your furnace like this in a power outage. Remove the cover here so we can see uh, the furnace fire up. All right, just fire it up. We've got the hot surface igniter. here while it's just uh, that component running I've got the app here for the battery open and uh, we can see it's pulling 110 watts at the moment that's including uh, the overhead 
that uh, the inverter may be using. Okay, the uh, blower is now fully up to speed. And uh, if we look here on the app, we're pulling about 491 watts. 493, 94. So right in there, it's estimating that at 56% state of charge, uh, we should be able to run this load for about an hour and 30 minutes. So that means with a full state of charge, you'd be able to run uh, a full-size furnace like this for, you know, just shy of three hours, which is awesome. Remembering, of course, that furnaces don't run probably for three hours straight. It'll kind of come on, warm the house up, and then shut off, wait for a while, and then uh, turn on and warm the house up and shut off. So you'd actually end up with potentially longer run times uh, with that uh, on-off cycle that uh, furnaces do. But uh, can a 12 volt, 100 amp hour, go kilowatt hour battery run a full-size furnace? Yes. Can a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and in particular this go around the go kilowatt hour unit, run a load of wash. The washer is usually the easiest one uh, for power stations and batteries to run. We're starting out at 55% state of charge. Let's uh, go ahead and get this uh, wash started. Okay, we're in uh, spin cycle here. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we've only discharged to 43% state of charge. And uh, we're only pulling 210 212 watts from the battery so it can easily do a batch of wash okay we have a load of clothes in the dryer now and uh, notice that the washer plug is just here now we have a new cord coming here for the dryer we'll just take a quick glance back here this outlet is empty as you can see now this is a gas dryer, so uh, there's no nothing plugged into the 240 volt there. I don't know if you can see the gas line back there. So this will only work with a gas powered dryer um, because it's 120 volts. Now certainly you could get a few more of these batteries and get a 240 volt split phase inverter and uh, run, you know, a uh, electric dryer however you'd need a lot more batteries and uh, power for that so the gas dryer is the secret sauce to making this work uh, we'll see uh, if this is able to get going we're currently at 35 percent state of charge 13 volts let's see if it'll do anything Ooh, close but uh, but not quite the, the battery errored out. Let's try it one more time here. Let's reset it and uh, let's try it one more time. Try number two here. Let's see. Nope. Next test for this 12.8 uh, volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by go kilowatt hour. Let's see if it will run an electric hot plate here. We're currently at 35% state of charge on the battery. Let's see what uh, happens when we turn this on. So 1700 watts being pulled at the moment. And uh, there we go. The battery just uh, shut itself off. Yep. Too much. Uh, this battery is only rated for 100 amps, and that was well over 100 amps of discharge. Can this 12 volt, 100 amp hour, go kilowatt hour smart battery run a whole household vacuum cleaner? I don't think so. Once again, I think this is going to be over the 100 amp uh, limit, but let's see. Sixteen hundred watts. Yep, shut off there. So sixteen hundred watts is well over the hundred amp uh, limit for uh, discharging. 
glad to see that uh, the uh, overcurrent protection is alive and well. And just by way of reference, uh, if you overload it and you need to uh, reset it, you can just come in here to control and clear the warning. Say yes. And uh, that will clear the overcurrent and then you can turn the discharge back on. So the app is really handy uh, for this kind of situation. Can a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and more in particular the Go Kilowatt Hour brand is it able to run a gaming desktop? We've got a, a gaming uh, benchmark running here uh, just to kind of push the uh, desktop quite a, a bit and I don't know if you can see but uh, we're pulling about 47.5, 47.3 amps from the battery get out this outlet right back there <laughs> I'm trying to hold too many things at once here. Is empty. We've got a surge protector back there, and it's coming over here, plugged in to this uh, 3,000 watt uh, inverter. It's uh, able to uh, run this workstation gaming PC just fine without any issues whatsoever. According to the app here, we're pulling almost 600 watts, 580. Uh, some auto watts. All right, well, that concludes uh, our testing, our video for this uh, 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Go Kilowatt Hour or Go KWH. Awesome battery. It did everything and passed everything with flying colors. The only thing I didn't quite get to, to spec was a full 100 amp hours. I got to 99. But uh, that's uh, possibly a user error. Uh, it's and definitely within the margin of error. So some things that uh, are really awesome is the connectivity and uh, smart aspects. This little uh, screen right here is extremely accurate. I compared it uh, throughout the test, as you saw with uh, Victron Smart Shunt, and uh, this was uh, very, very close. So whatever they've got going on uh, internally is extremely accurate now. Uh, this is super handy. I found myself referring to this all the time uh, throughout uh, the, the video and uh, the tests that I ran. So extremely handy. And then the smart uh, app. Uh, for it as well has been uh, extremely handy. It uh, is safe to use. Uh, I overloaded it a number of times as you saw in the video. It worked just fine. Uh, it shut itself down and uh, didn't turn back on until I reset things. Passed all the tests that uh, it should have. We would have been nervous if it had uh, powered the items that were drawing a huge amount of power from it when it wasn't supposed to produce more than 100 amps. So, uh, happy to see that. Best news is you get all of this in a fantastic uh, package for a really got awesome price. Uh, this retails for $329. I have a link for it uh, down in the description below, so be sure and check that out. But it gets even better. I've got an exclusive coupon code down there for you guys. And uh, that's going to bring the price uh, down sub $300 all the way down to $269. So I think that's a steal of a deal uh, for what you're getting. And uh, just be sure you get this uh, this model with the smart screen. Uh, it just has the power button. Last time I went there, it looked like you could still get the original one of these that uh, did not have the great packing and the nice screen and everything the app control uh, I think it's well worth it the few extra dollars to get this and again at 269 you really can't uh, can't lose hopefully you guys uh, like this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe because we've got a lot of other cool things in the pipeline here for you we'll catch you next time